Look, I know this sounds like a very stupid and dangerous idea, but in reality, I'm convinced it's just dangerous. So, this is a shotgun shell. If you open the shell, you find the shot part of the name, but you also find this thing here in nitrocellulose, also known as smokeless powder or gunpowder. This is a propellant that burns pretty quickly, and it's made by putting cellulose inside nitric acid. After the transformation, you can see it burns much faster than normal cellulose. If you examine the shell's butt, you find a metallic button called the primer, that if you hit with some degree of force, it blows up. That explosion ignites the nitrocellulose, which burns and turns into a very hot high-pressure gas that would normally be used to push the shot out of the barrel. Normally. This video was brought to you by Onshape. In the 1930s, there was this tractor called Field Marshal that used shotgun shells to start its engine, which kind of makes sense because what does an engine need to function? Very hot high-pressure gases that push the piston. Okay, how does any of this ties into lumberjacking? An axe is normally used either to chop or split wood. It does this because it has the shape of a wedge that, once it's pressed into the wood, pushes the crack apart and splits the log into two pieces. There's even this axe called Chopper 1 that takes this to the extreme by using mechanical levers that help push the crack open. What if I made a hollow axe with exhaust ports in the blade and used the very hot high-pressure gases from the shotgun shell to push the walls of the crack apart and split the wood effortlessly? Yeah, that's the main idea. And if you still think this is as stupid as it is dangerous, look, I understand, I'm not trying to revolutionize the lumberjacking industry here. This is just a silly idea I had while pooping, and it has infected my mind to such a degree of obsession that now I just need to build it to make sure if it works or not. With that said, don't you dare try to replicate this at home. I don't care if you have seven PhDs in engineering. Let the professional idiot do this. Here's my main problem with all of this. I have never shot anything in my life, like, ever. And I guess that stems from the fact that I live in Portugal, where it's even illegal to own a baseball bat without also owning the glove and the ball. I'm not getting a shotgun, is what I mean. But because I do need to run some tests, I built this. <laughs> yeah, I kind of built this. I saw some videos of people building them online. Uh, I call this a hillbilly shotgun. It's basically two tubes that fit together. One of the tubes has a pin in the bottom that hits the shell in the bottom and triggers it. I built this for scientific reasons, by the way. I weighed the trigger tube and then I released it from several heights until I was able to trigger the primer. The point of this was for me to know how much energy it takes to detonate the primer. Height times weight times gravity gives me the amount of energy. I measure this because I don't want to hit the shell so hard that I pierce through the primer, I open a hole and then the explosion goes backwards. By the way, I removed the shot from the shell first. I'm not shooting loaded shells into my shop's floor. Okie dokie. What I need now is a hollow axe head with exhaust ports in the blade and I need it to be made out of steel because I don't really trust any other material not to blow up in my face. Luckily, there's this surface that 3D prints metal parts called JLC3DP. I've used them before, they're great. You basically upload a 3D model to their website, they 3D print the parts and you get them in like a week. That is great and all, but here's the problem. For me to 3D print a 3D model, I need a 3D model. And to make sure that the dimensions of the 3D model are right, so the axe head doesn't blow up in my face, I think I need to build a prototype. I can't machine steel, but I can machine aluminium. I know, I said it needed to be made out of steel, but for a prototype, aluminium should do the job, I think. I machined the axe in two halves that I then joined using screws and cold welding glue. It's strong glue. I know this setup looks a little bit sketchy, but don't worry because I'm going to be triggering this from back there using a very sophisticated mechanism. Also, I have this. It's a sheet of bulletproof glass, so it should be safe. Let's give it a go. One, two, three. That wasn't half bad. Um, it was a bang, but it wasn't very strong. I mean, it was only the primer in the casing. I'm gonna add some propellant to see if we get a bigger bang. I saw this technique online, and by online I mean YouTube, to make shotgun shell blanks, in which they use floral foam to compress the propellant in place. I'm using the same amount that already came in the shell because I think that's the safe way to go, right? One, two, three. Hmm, something here is not right. I'm getting a bang, but it's not a big bang. Not like this. Yeah, so what's happening is the propellant is not burning. It's getting stuck inside of the axe. And I'm guessing the reason for that is pressure. 
or better yet, the lack of pressure. A regular shotgun shell has this crimp that uh, closes the casing and it's really hard to open. It also has heavy metal pellets and this thing here that looks like a piston. All of this creates resistance that delays the expansion and gives time for the propellant to burn. When I open the shells, I get rid of the crimp, I remove the shot and the piston. I need to find a way to close the shell again. Okay, I did some digging and apparently this is called a star crimp. It's done by using tools that I do not have, but what I do have is brass, a CNC machine and Onshape. Sponsor time. Onshape is a 3D modeling app that allows you to draw 3D models for 3D printing, CNC machining or anything else. I use it because it's very easy to use, it allows me to do anything that I need and it never crashes. Onshape is a cloud-based app and because of that, you don't need to download anything. You can 3D model in the browser itself. This means your file is always saved, is always safe and it also means you can 3D model using almost any device. This makes it very useful to share 3D models, but also for several people to work in the same file at the same time. It's great for makers, but also for engineers and companies. I highly encourage engineers to sign up to Onshape and get up to six months of the professional version for free at onshape.pro slash Intexa. This is what Onshape looks like. And it's also what my attempt of designing a Stark Rimper looks like. I'm gonna send it to the CNC machine and see if it works. Damn it. Okay. Okay, so here it is. I mean, it doesn't look half bad. This is the original one, and this is mine. Actually, now that I look at it, uh, mine looks a little bit ugly. But we should do the job. I don't see why not. It did not. It's not even burning 10% of the propellant. Apparently, the pressure inside of a shotgun shell can easily reach 800 bar. For reference, 2 bar does this to a syringe. 800 bar is equivalent to placing the weight of a car on top of the star crimp. In a shotgun, the barrel is long, which allows a smooth expansion and more than enough time to combust everything. On the other hand, my axe is not very long. I have something going for me though. When the axe penetrates the wood, the exhaust ports are going to get sealed by the wood itself, which means the only way for the gases to escape is to push the wood apart, I think. I can theorize all I want, but I actually have to test it. So I made this new design for the axe head, which by the way, I think it looks pretty cool. I'm gonna order it from JLC3DP. And in the meantime, while I wait for the parts, I have another problem that I need to solve. The hillbilly shotgun is great in everything. I mean, it's not great, but uh, it gets the job done. But it's also too big for me to use in the axe. I need a more condensed solution and I have an idea. So, when I swing the axe, I accelerate its head and when eventually it's abruptly stopped by the wood, if I had a plunger somewhere here, when the impact happens, said plunger would accelerate forward and hit the shotgun shell. What if I use the magnet to hold the plunger in place up here and when the axe hits, the impact it's enough to detach the plunger from the magnet and move it down? Do you remember how I measured how much potential energy it took to trigger the primer? Another form of potential energy is elastic potential energy, and by that I mean rubber bands. Using some brass pipe adapters and a brass P9 machine, I made this. It's spring-loaded and it allows me to heat the primer cap safely without the risk of the pressure pushing the shell in the opposite direction, being the opposite direction my face. I also machined the plunger in brass and a guide tube in polycarbonate. If I push this back, it gets attracted by the magnet, which fixes it in place. If I quickly remove the magnet, the rubber band accelerates the plunger in the direction of the pin. It works pretty well, as you can tell by what happened to Integra's Hulk model. Just for giggles, I actually loaded a shell with some gun cotton that I made, and it also worked decently. Uh, that's the Axsmith bobblehead. I'm sorry, James, I didn't have any more Hulk in Texas. You took the hit well, though. You're a tough one. This is a really heavy box. I'm guessing this is not the I hate tomato t-shirts that I ordered. Yep, I don't think this is my shirt. But it's pretty heavy and it looks badass. The dimensions seem pretty good. So the general idea is for me to blow up the shell here. The hot high pressure gases travel through these channels and come out of these ports. Uh, as you might have noticed, this is not sharpened yet because apparently it's illegal to 3D print plated parts. So I rounded the edges. 
In this way, they can't really tell this is an X head. As far as they know, this is just a weird showered head. I do need to sharpen this dough, and I'm terrified of doing so because I have zero experience. But I don't really have a choice. Yeah, that should be good. Okay, now I need to weld the adapter in place and put a handle on it. Should I hammer this in? How am I supposed to fit these two together? I'm going to insert it into the curve here. There you go. Oh, ho, 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 ho. Two, one. Jesus. That is insane. Do you know what's also insane? Not turning on the microphone when you get results like this. Look at my idiot face, completely unaware of what I've done. Anyway, let me take this moment of silence to tell you that the X works really well. When it works, because a lot of the times it doesn't. Either I don't go deep enough, or I go too deep, or I miss the target completely. As you can imagine, this is none of the X's fault and 100% my fault. But none of that really matters, because when it works, it's just unreal. That piece of wood right there got shot against that wall. Do you know how far that is? Do you understand what I'm saying right now? Do you realize how insane this is? This is reality. Take it in. But don't try this at home or anywhere else. This is super dangerous. Dale. Dude! What is this? I feel so powerful right now, but I'm also really, really scared. I'm gonna keep doing it though. <laughs> uh, this is not good for my heart. My only regret in all of this is that I only had a box of shells, so my testing was limited. It's hard to get this stuff in Portugal. But anyway, if I don't get arrested, I'll see you soon. And remember, Tomatoes are disgusting. Look, I'm happy this is working, but I think I'm gonna have to drink some tea after this and maybe take a nap. Forget that, I'm not gonna be able to sleep.